This video focuses then uh, in a third party audit if an organization has a major nonconformity raised against them, what happens next? So let's put ourselves in that situation then. I'm an organization and we've just had a third party audit and unfortunately, or fortunately, we've had a major nonconformity raised. What happens next? What happens to my certificate? And what as a company do I have to do in terms of response? Right. So the first thing that's going to happen at the closing meeting, you're going to go and enter the decertification process. Right. Okay. Yeah. And what is it in reality? What does that mean? So, as Devin said, it's a process that manages the certificate during um, this, the next time scale. So, in the case of a major nonconformity, the decertification process would mandate that your certificate was suspended. So your wow. your certificate. And that sounds quite severe. Well, it, it, in a way, it is. Um, although the certificate is still what's known as valid in in ITF terms, right. but it's yeah. in this state of suspension, which is a temporary state. Right. Um, and would my customers know about that? About the suspension? Uh, or yeah, only depending it, on who my customers were. Yeah. The ITF, the, if you're supplying an ITF, ITF OEM, then they would, through right. the ITF database, be advised of uh, one of their suppliers going right. into suspension. But it wouldn't mean I stop shipping product no. today. No, no, no. Okay, so uh, I can carry on shipping product. If I'm supplying to the likes of a non ITF OEM member, maybe I'm supplying to Ota, Kia. Yeah. Does it, would, would they know about my certificate? No, no, no. Right. No. Okay. Unless you so told them. It sounds severe then, but actually I'm still going to continue to trade in the normal way. Yes. Yeah. What has to happen then? My certificate's in suspension. Yeah. What do I have to provide the certification body? So again, this is this is all described in the rules. Um, okay. Rules fifth edition yeah. describes what happens and the time scales. But essentially, you have to provide information to your certification body within 20 days. Yes. Right. Okay. And if I've read correctly, that would also include the root cause analysis. Yeah, it does. And containment. And containment. containment. Yeah. Right. And then will you, if you were the auditor, will you come back to my premises to check how well I've done the action? The auditor will come back to check to make sure that the corrective action was fully implemented. But okay. That, that doesn't happen until 90 days. Yeah. So within Typically, 90 within days, 90 they will days. come back yeah. to my site. Yeah. You have, yeah. uh, the supplier themselves has 60 days for full corrective action. Okay. So we have the 20 day for the initial response. Then I have to respond in 60. Yeah. Then in a maximum of yeah. 90, the auditor will come back to yeah. my site. No, is, that, is that? No, no, that, that 60 range, that's for the CB to accept. Oh, okay, the acceptance action. has to be in that. Yeah, so well. if you so I can't really wait till the fifty ninth day. No, you want that. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So assume that I've done a very good job. I've taken good systemic corrective action. What happens to my certificate status? So they'll yeah if they they come back and do the on site special audit if they conclude you've done a, a great job at um, managing that non conformity and implementing effective corrective action then the certification body will reinstate your certificate and it will right. move from suspended to back to issued right. status. And if I'm lazy and I don't take effective corrective action, is there any consequences? Yeah, yeah. yeah at that point, your cert certificate will be withdrawn. Right. And if I'm correct, there's a number of organizations every year that will have their certificates Absolutely. withdrawn. Yeah. I know in ITF you keep some data on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think the really important learning point here for organizations is particularly in the event of a major nonconformity, it's essential that you take good systemic corrective action to really prevent that problem from happening again and that you can demonstrate the robustness of the corrective action and the verification when the auditor comes back to your site to verify that implementation. So thank you for your insight to that.